Where do we turn for organization when a simple to-do list doesn't work anymore? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week, we're gonna take the world famous getting things done method and put that into an incredible workbook. That's right. In fact, we're gonna do this all from scratch. I'm gonna show you how you can create this ultimate drag and drop getting things done workbook so that you can fully organize your schedule and your daily plan. It's gonna be an incredible training. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a fantastic training where we are gonna design this incredible template to getting things done. It's gonna take your to-dos, items, your processes, whatever you have to do, whether it's work, personal, or relationship, and it's gonna be able to organize it in a fashion that is fully dynamic and customizable. You're gonna be able to create new categories, new subcategories, add in tasks. Those tasks are gonna be able to drag and drop them. You'll be able to assign brand new subcategories here. All we need to do is move it over. We can also design task types, create task statuses, simply dragging and drop them will change the status. We can edit any single task. All we need to do is just click the edit. It's gonna automatically edit. We can make updates to that. We can save those. We can search for additional tasks here. We can filter, we can see all, we can edit tasks from here. So it's a really great idea because we are taking one of the biggest principles that was ever developed and the system's called getting things done. This is a really cool training because it takes a system that's already been developed, now original, getting things done was a book by David Allen. Now, David Allen created a really cool book and it's called The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. So we're gonna take those principles, those systems, and everything that this book taught, and we're gonna put it into Excel so that you can create your own getting things done workbook. It is a personal productivity methodology that redefines how you approach your life and work. So basically in this system, he says in his book that basically we're gonna capture all and collect all the things that comes in life's way, whether it's work, personal, or anything. And then we have to figure out what it is exactly. We need to clarify it. We're then gonna organize it. We can reflect and we can engage. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in the workbook. Now, this came to me from a comment. So user WD7 and so on. Thank you very much for your YouTube comment. Uh, he says, please review the Getting Things Done Productivity Tool. And uh, he wanted me to make a template on that. So that's exactly what I've done. So once again, thank you for your comments, your ideas. We're gonna be doing it from scratch using this workbook and it's gonna be really great training. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe. I create these incredible templates and training every single Tuesday for the comprehensive application. Every single Saturday, I bring you VBA basic for beginners training. So if you're new to VBA and you wanna learn more about that, then of course, Saturday trainings are gonna be perfect for you. You. This template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down in the description. Just look for the word download and go ahead and put your name and email and I'm gonna get that sent right over to you. I'll never spam you. So go ahead and get this template. And of course, if you do like these templates, I've got 300 of my best templates into a single zip file. And I've got it for a very low price. Also, if you like this training and you have some ideas or you want me to add in some features or fix something or you want me to focus on an area, I'm doing that on my Patreon platform platform. Patreon is where you can get all the icons, pictures, and everything inside the workbooks along with PDF codebooks where you can go over every line of the code in detail and learn a lot. So I've got all that over on a Patreon and it's also a great way to support our channel here for just a few dollars a month. All right, we're going to get started on this. I'm going to be designing this from scratch on this workbook here. But first, we're going to go over a brief overview of all the features and what we're going to be doing. This is a very simplistic workbook. We have an admin screen. Inside the admin, you can create your own task types here. We can create icons. We can select any and add any icon for those. We can create a status. Each task can have its own status. We can create a list of categories. So if we were to add a category here and maybe we wanted something called weekends, we could do that that's been added. We can add anything we want to do on a weekend here so we can put fun, learning, and anything we might want to do on a weekend. So we can automatically create and edit and update categories. Once we do that, that brand new category and subcategory are gonna be available here. So now we see weekends. And we can create and add any task we want for weekends we can move one over. So if we decide that we are going to move it over to weekends, we can do that. We just need to edit this task. And also when we change the category on it, so we change it to weekends, 
that subcategory is automatically going to be changed. That dynamic dropdown list, I should say, is going to be available for you. So we had saved that task and it's automatically going to be available on the weekends. We can also set individual colors for those, which is kind of nice. If I want to take that weekend and I want to set a color to that, I can do just that. And then, of course, once we add that in, it's automatically going to update once we select it again. So the task colors are dynamic, the task content, the categories, the subcategories, the task type, fully customizable. And that's part of the principles of this getting things done. Lastly, all we have is the database where all this data is stored here. So that's what we're going to be designing. Everything is fully drag and drop. So if I decide instead of fun, I want to change this to learning, I just bring it over here and it's going to automatically change. If you edit this task, we see that it's got a status of pending and it's got a type of email. So if I decide I want to change that task automatically, I can just cancel that and I can just drag it and I can change it to, let's say an idea. So I'm going to bring it right down here under idea. That's automatically going to change to idea. So if I also want to take it over here and I want to put it on hold as a status, I can put it on hold right here. I think I click there and you see now that it is on hold and it's an idea. So the task type and status are fully drag and drop. That's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We can add a brand new task. We can filter, we can do lots of things. So it's going to be really great. Let's get started on this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to bring it over here to my next screen. I'll keep an eye on that. And we're going to start designing this thing from scratch. Okay. The first thing we want to do, we want to put a title and I've got a title here in the admin screen. And I'm just going to update that. I've got a logo. I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go into the getting things done worksheet and I'm just going to paste them in here like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring them over here and I'm going to change this. Of course, it's not admin and settings. I'm going to change this to getting things done and then we'll just do GTD because it's often referred to as GTD. So we'll put the abbreviation in there and then we have that here. We've got our header. The first two columns here, I want to make sure that those are going to be for admin. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to give them a gray color and we've got some information that we're going to be putting in. So we've got task IDs. So we're going to put that in here. The first one is that task IDs. I've got individual tasks here. Each one of them has a unique ID. When I've selected a task or added a new task, I need to know which one we have available. So that way we're going to put inside the admin. So here inside the admin in A2, what I'm going to put is I want to know that selected task ID. That's going to be here. I also want to know the database row that's associated with that. So we're going to put the task database row as you saw. And I also want to know the next task ID. So we'll give those a unique color here. We'll just use yellow and I'll use borders on that. So I want those specifically for our selected task. When we select a task, I want to know what that task ID is. And I'm just going to left justify all these fields. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a named range that I've already created for the task ID. So we're going to look at that. We're going to pay it a visit. We're going to take a look inside our named manager here. We don't have too many. I've got a task ID. I'm going to use the tab key. What that's going to do is going to provide the dancing ants around it. So we see that it encompasses all the task IDs. Now, if we take a look at the formula that I've created it, I'm using an offset formula. We're starting out in the header row because if we start out in row four, it's going to create an error. But if I start out in row three, that's header, which won't be deleted. And then I move one row down, comma one, you see that right here, then automatically it is going to be able to take on all of the data. Also, we need to know how many rows. So we're going to use count A for that. Also, using the header, A3 all the way to a large number, and we're going to subtract one. The reason we subtract one is because we do not want to include the header row in the count. We only want this to involve a single column, therefore only one column. So that's it. That's all we need to do. And what you want to do is you use a shift tab to tab back out or shift tab in. When you tab in, you see the dancing ants and you know you've got the correct data. If there's an incorrect data issue with the formula, those dancing ants will be inaccurate or missing. So we've got a task ID and it starts on row four. So what I want to know is let's say we've selected task one. I need to know that that's on row four back into our GTD worksheet. I'm gonna put in one here. Let's assume that we've selected task ID one. And I wanna know the database row that is associated with that. How do we find that? So what we can use is, if in case it's not found, I'm gonna use a match formula, and I'm looking up the task ID one. And I wanna look it up inside the task ID. So this is very common. If you followed my videos, you will see this quite often. So I'm gonna look it up and I want an exact match. So I'm gonna use zero. I'm going to add three because remember, I want the row and the row start on row four. If there's an error, I'm going to put empty. That's going to tell us that task ID one is on row four. That's exactly what I want. That next task ID, we're going to use also equals if error. I'm going to use the max formula. 
and we're maxing that task ID. I want to add one. Now keep in mind that task IDs must all be numerical for us to use the max formula. If there's an error, which could be because in case there is no data, I want to default it to one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's going to tell us our next task ID is 44. So if we use control shift down arrow, we see that our next task ID would be 44. So we know that it is correct. I also want to have some information. When I select on a specific category, here's our categories here, also a list of categories here. I want to know which one was selected. Selected. We need to know the column that was associated, and that's kind of very important. If I take a look at this column, we see that this is column 11, right? So I want to know which category has been selected. Is it category 1? So I want a number, basically, associated with this. Because if I know that category today is selected, I need to determine what the subcategories exist for that. So basically, once a user selects a category, we need to know which subcategories are available for that. And that's going to be inside our user form. So I'll go over that a little bit later. But basically, what I need is the number that's associated with that. This would be one all the way to eight. Okay, so in this case, it's eight. So I want to know exactly which one it is. So how do we do that? Excuse me, seven on that one. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to put in something called form category column. And I'll let you know exactly what that is in the future. And then I want to know the selected category. As you saw in the sample, when we make a selection on a category, I want to know what category has been selected. I'm going to use conditional formatting for that. So we need to know that you don't have to know exactly what it is right away because we'll be reviewing and refreshing just as we add all the admin there's not too much we are going to have drag and drop functionality as you saw in the sample if you missed it no problem i'll be going over it now in drag and drop functionality we need to know some information i need to know a few things one i need to know what is the selected task id in fact i've got selected task here right so i just want to differentiate so let's do edit task id i'm just going to do edit edit task ID because I want them to be just a bit different names. And this is our selected. When I select it, I'll just do shape task ID because I want to differentiate. And I also want to know the selected shape task row. So that's very important. And I'll show you the differences between these two. But basically, if the ID is one here, we also need to know the row. So all I need to do is just copy and then paste that formula in there. And we see that if we change this to two, it's going to be five. It's that same formula, except this time it's based on B9. Because when I select a task, I want to know what ID and what row it's associated. Perfect. Okay, so now we have that. Now also, when we use drag and drop, when I make a selection of a shape, I want to know the left position of that shape, and I want to know the top position of that shape. And I want to put that information somewhere. So I'm going to put in selected shape left position okay i also want to know the selected shape top position and this is important because when the shape is moved we're going to check this is it still the same if it's still the same it hasn't been moved if it's different it has been moved once it has been moved i need to know whether it's been moved or not so i'm going to put task moved here and that's simply going to be boolean true or false here so we're just going to put in true or false okay so all of these are basically used for our drag and drop so we really don't need too much for our drag and drop if you do want to know all the code i also make these available in my developer library too as well we've got over 500 macros in my developers library okay great so we've got everything we need here that's all we need for the admin so just this information here and also we need to create some shapes which we're going to do i need some sample shapes so what we're going to do is i'm going to use insert here and i'm just going to use a shape we'll just use a square shape here we can use any shape but i think the rectangle is fine for us and then i'm just going to create a rectangle here now the size will be determined on other things so i don't need to get the size perfect and i'll give it a color here i'll just give it a background let's do the shape fill we can just use this now also the fill color is going to be based on whatever these colors we set here so the fill color may not be so important but we do want to make sure that the text okay so i'm going to put in just some sample text and what i really want to do with this is just get it to the format that I want. Obviously white is not going to work with this. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to format that to the black font here. I wanna reduce the font to at least probably, let's just use uh, 10, I think, or nine, right? I wanna make sure we fit in all, that might be okay. So what I also wanna do is notice that we've got a lot of margin area around there. I want to change that. So I'm gonna use control one. And what that's gonna do is gonna bring in our format shapes. And I'm gonna go into the text options, text here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that left margin either to zero or very small. So I think zero should be fine. And then zero here, 
and then zero, and then zero. We'll just zero them all out. Maybe slightly on the left point, zero, two, I think. And then we'll do the top at point zero, two. So, okay, that looks good. Bring that up to 10. I think that's going to be sufficient. Okay, I don't want a border on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the shape format. And we have the shape outline, and we're just going to put none. I did, would like to put a little bit of shadow on that. So I'm going to do it right about like that. Okay, very good. I like that. So that's going to be our shape. As our tasks get created, then we'll get duplicated. So we're going to use that. That's very important. And I also want to be able to edit that task too. So when I click on a little edit icon, I want to be able to edit. So we're going to add that in just a moment. Okay, very good. So let's get started on our formats here. So the first thing what I want here inside D, I want to be able to search by. Let's do in three, search by. And then next up, I want to know the search. So basically, it allows us to search by any fields, and then we'll have a search. And then here, notice some things are already formatted a little bit easier, the merge and center. It's going to make things a little bit quicker. So I'm here, I'm going to put in task list. I want a list of those tasks. Notice it's already bold. And then down here, we can put in task name here, and then I'll put in the type, and then here, it's going to be the status. Okay, so that's where our task is going to list. And also up here, I want a list of those categories. So I'm going to put in the category here. VBA is going to take care of the categories. Now we have up to 10 categories. So I'm going to just count 10 here. Then next up after the 10th category, I want to put a task type. So we're going to put in task type. We can have up to 10 task types. So again, I'm going to count 10 here. And then all the way inside 24 here, I'm going to put in the task status. So task status. Now the task type and the task status are just simply going to be linked. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the task type name. I'm going to copy this control C and then we're going to go into the GTD and our task type and I'm going to paste the links and that's going to be sufficient. That's all I want to do. And we'll add some conditional formatting onto that. And I've got some a little bit. So I also want to do it for status. You want the same thing. So that means anything that the user change is automatically going to be linked. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to go into the status and I do need to update some conditional formatting, which are there already. And we're pasting the links. And basically the idea is if they decide to put in a different status, if we add a different status here, it's automatically going to be linked into our GTD worksheet. So just like that. So what we want to do is we want to add some conditional formatting. I've got two rules here. I'm going to move them into one. VBA is going to take care of the categories for us because I want the colors added there. I'm going to hold the control and I want to give these a specific format. So here, here, I'm holding down the control and I just want to add a border here. So I'm going to go all the way down here. That's going to be fine. And what we'll do is I'll just add conditional formatting, format those cells, and we're going to add a border. And then I'm going to use a constant color, which is going to be this color. And I'm going to add a thick border around there. Okay. Now I also want to have some formats here. So I'm going to use some fade out formats for our headers here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to use control one, of course, and that's going to bring up our information for the formatting. We're going to use the fill. I'm going to use that fill effects here. And I'm going to set this to this blue color here. This is going to be our main header. And then we have a subheader. So this is what we're going to use for our main header and click OK. Now we do have some subheader information here, which we're going to add in. And then that's simply going to be the lighter color. So again, we're using the fill effects. This is going to be for our subheader here clicking OK. So now we've got some conditional formatting, which I will be adding in and updating as well. So our categories are here. Now I didn't link the categories because I'm going to have VBA take care of the categories inside here. So what else? This is a really simple type of design, so it's going to be easy for us. Let's go ahead and look at some conditional formatting. And we also want to add some borders around here and I want to add a color. Now we do want a background around here, so let's put in the background and then we can add some borders here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the page layout background and I've got one saved. Now, if you want the backgrounds, the pictures and everything else, of course I have them available on Patreon or also YouTube Silver will have that. And then we got, oh, that was a cool training multilingual. If you missed that, that's gonna help change the language. I've got a background here and I got the logo here and I got all the icons which I'll make available. So we're gonna insert the background. That's the first thing I wanna do. That's nice background look. I created that background with Pixlr, which is a free software using all that P-I-X-L-R. So you can check that out. So now we've got our background set. What we'll do is we'll add some borders around here here and here and then here okay so i'm going to use again control one to branch it i'm going to do the borders and i'll just do the inside borders here and then a bottom border here okay that looks good and then we'll do the thick one around here and then we're going to be set up for our formatting so we can see how they're done we can use the color here that we used 
and then I'll just use this border around here. So things are looking very good. I've got this. Now, users are going to be able to enter information here and what they're searching by. So we're going to make those white. So those are user entered fields. And we'll add some borders around there so we can clearly identify those areas in which the user will be adding some information so that they can quickly find the task. And I've also got a lot of ideas for Patreon too, in which we're going to be adding. So I want to hear from you. So we've got that here. Let's add that up and then we'll put in the dotted line for our middle section here, which is what I want. Clicking OK. All right, that looks good. And we're just going to add one more here to separate those. Once we get the borders done, we're going to add some buttons and buttons are an important part of this because we want to make sure that we can add new and clear the filters. So I'm going to do that right now. It's buttons before icons. So we're going to do insert shapes and I'm going to use a rectangle shape. I'm just going to add a shape here. This is going to be called add new task. So all in caps, add new task. Okay, I want to write justify it so that we have space for an icon. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to write justify it and put it in the middle here. We'll increase the button width a little bit so to about 1.35. Okay, so that's sufficient. And I also want one for clearing. We need to clear any filter. So I'm going to use control D. That's going to duplicate that. And then what we can do is move it over here. And this one's simply going to be called clear. Okay, I can also make this one a little bit smaller. We don't need that. So we'll change that to about 0.8. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I do want to give those a little bit of a more of a theme format. So that looks not bad. I just want to remove the border on those. We don't need that. We can also align them. And then what we can do inside our outline, we can say no outline. So those are looking good. So we got an add new task and clear. We can give it a theme if we want something closer to this, maybe a little bit darker here on that closer to our theme. Very good. So now next up, what we want to do is we're ready to add the icons. So the first thing I'm going to do is click insert and I'm going to go into the pictures and I want them over the cells in this device. Now I've got some icons saved up here and we are going to need this icon and I want the clear filter icon, the add new. And I think that looks good. These are already inside the admins for our task. So that's going to be helpful. I'm going to insert those and want to make them a little bit smaller. So point two. And then what we'll do is we will bring them down here and then we can just add them on top of the buttons and then we're going to group the buttons accordingly. So we have the add new and I got the clear filter right here. So then once I have that, I'm just going to hold the control, make sure they're in the middle, group them together, doing the same thing with the add new, using the control, making sure they're in the middle and then grouping them together. Now this one I'm going to use actually twice. So I need this one down here right? Because we need to add it. And I'm going to use control D and I need to duplicate that. Actually, I might have that one already created if I didn't clear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the display the selection pane because I think I've already got that one created here and edit task button. So if we show that, you see, I already have one. I just didn't remove it from my sample. So I have it already. This is going to be used for edit. So I'm simply going to remove this one. We have this edit task button. It was just hidden. Okay. We don't need to run it yet. <laughs> I've got nothing to run yet. Okay, so now what we do is we've got this edit task. So basically when I select a task and I want to edit that task, I can use this. This here will only show up if I've added a specific task, but I've paused all the code. So we don't want that to run. Saving our work so far, also very important. And we can remove the grid line. So I'm going to do view grid lines and it's going to unselect. That looks a nice cleaner look. Let's work on the conditional formatting here. Our categories are going to be formatted by VVA. I do want to work on the conditional formatting here because I've copied and pasted two rules and I need individual rules. I want conditional formatting for these. So I'm going to go to the home. I'm going to check for any conditional format that might be on those cells. And we're going to update that. Okay, so what I really want is I want this rule. If we can edit the rule, I want to make sure that this should not be H3. It should be H14. That means as long as H14 does not equal zero, I want to format that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look into the formats and what kind of format. I want to give it a border here. I want to give it this border on the left the bottom and the right. So that's going to be our border. Our fill, we have a custom color so we can do fill effects. So I've already saved a color to help us clicking. Okay, I just need to update the applies to. So we've got that H14. And basically, well, that means when there's a value here, I want to color it and give it some borders, otherwise leave it empty. So clicking OK. So that's for H14 and clicking OK. Now what we want to do is I want to update the applies to to just these fields right here. And then we're simply going to duplicate this for the one below and click apply. OK, good. That's exactly what I want. Again, we need to duplicate it for the one below. So we're going to create a brand new rule. I'm going to use a formula of this one. It's going to do exactly the same. This one's going to be starting here on H25. We want to make sure that it's going to be for every row below that. So we need to remove the absolute before 25. It does not equal zero. Remember, these are linked. If it says zero, that means there's nothing in the admin. OK, 
Okay, so we're linking those. We're going to format those exactly the same. I'm going to do the fill effects just as you saw. I'm going to use this color here and this color here. The reason we're using fill effects and the same color is because those custom colors are available on fill effects. They're not available on the normal, but they are available on gradients. So clicking OK. And then also the border, which we want to do, we're going to use our theme color just as we did before, which is this one, a dotted line on the left, the bottom, and the right. Of course, we're going to set the applies to. Now that applies to here is going to be this one right here. Let's take a look, make sure we have the right one. Oh, we got a little bit darker color. I'll update the color on that one. So this one is going to be this one right here. So this is the applies to all these cells. And we'll just update it a little bit on that darker. So we're going to format that. I want them equal. So I think we use this one here. Okay, clicking OK. And we're going to update this because it already, when we change the applies to it, we're going to change this back to 25 where we had it and where we want it. Clicking OK and clicking apply. OK, we're good to go. So now the idea is if I decide to add one from the admin screen or remove one, let's say we remove closed here from the task, we also want to make sure that the formats are removed from here. And that's exactly what I like. And if you want to keep the right and left borders as in solid, what we can do is just go into conditional formatting. I'm going to edit the rules and just clear out the borders here on the left and right. So when we look at the border, if you don't want these, all you need to do is just do clear and then we'll just set that dotted line back to where I have only on the lower and that's going to be consistent with our theme here. Okay, very good. So I like the way that looks. Our formatting is really done and now we are ready to get into some of the more information. We have a search by here. What are we searching by? Well, I want to search by almost everything inside this list. I want to search by task, ID, name, type, status, so pretty much everything in the notes. And I've created a search by list here. If you want to create a quick list, all you need to do is just copy this here and then you can just do paste and of course we can do transpose. That's all I did here. And then what I did is give it a named range. So when we highlight those, we see we have a named range called search by. So search by is the list that I wanna use. So when we go back in here, I'm gonna create a data validation for this. So we're gonna go into the data, data validation here, and I'm gonna create a list here. And then we're just gonna simply equals search by and click okay. So now when we search by, we can see that we can add anything in here, task ID, task name, whatever we want. So we can search that list. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is we've got this edit icon. I've got some sample. Let's give this a name that's unique because basically when I duplicate this or VBA duplicates this, it's gonna put those all up here. I also have some conditional formatting up here. I want the categories to appear here. So if I put in test, I wanna make sure that some borders automatically show up. So how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. We're gonna go into the home, conditional formatting, manage rules, because I want those subcategories. So if the cell does not equal blank, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it bold. I'm gonna look at this. So this is for non-blanks. I'm gonna give it a border all the way around. I thought I'd give it a bold, but it doesn't look, I'd like to give it a bold actually. And the fill is dynamic. So we're not gonna set it. The fill is gonna be based on the color of the specific category. So each individual category has colors, in which we're going to assign a color to that. If I can get to this, I'll show you how to pop up. But basically, whatever the cell you color here is going to be automatic. So you could use this pop up, or you can use anything here. It's just going to take the color automatically. So very, very easy to create it. Okay, very good. So the idea is that when we add items, they're automatically added here. As we add text, it's automatically going to simply add those borders around. The fill, of course, is gonna be the color of whatever we've chosen. VBA will take care of populating. When I select a category here, first thing we wanna do is take the categories here. I can copy and paste them, but I also want the colors, so we're gonna have VBA do it. I also want these colors to be associated. I want to populate this area with all the categories we have, and I want the colors to show up here. So when I select a category, the subcategories will show up here. What are the subcategories? Like if I select today, the subcategories are here. I want all of these subcategories to show up directly here, starting here and all the way through S. We have up to 10 different subcategories, which is super handy. So if we were to count this starting column J all the way to column S, we see that we have 10 columns available, which is quite handy. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to populate these subcategories here and I want to have the colors associated coming from the admin. And so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use a macro to do that. And when do we want that to happen? Whenever we make a change to the name here, I want to make sure that we make updates according to that. So we can do that using Alt F11 to get into the visual basic or right here in the developers. If you don't have the developers, you can right click, customize the ribbon, and you can get to the developers by selecting this. Again, you don't need to have that because you could use Alt F11 as a shortcut. 
once you do that you're going to get into this now i've commented out the macros here so that nothing happens while we're designing it so the first one we're going to go into this module now notice that i have two workbooks open this one is the sample this one's we're going, to, we're going to be working on right here so let's close this one up the sample is on my other screen so we're just going to focus on this now i've got multiple modules in this i've got admin macros here now inside here we've got the colors and we got adding an icon we'll try to get to those if we can and clearing the icon so those are the three macros that were used exclusively on the admin screen and i'll try to get to them depending upon timing the ability to add an icon using these clear an icon and of course adding the color so those are the three small ones inside the getting things done we're going to focus on this gtd macros that's what we want the first macro that you see here which is called categories refresh that is exactly what we want to do so we're going to focus on that now once we get into that macro we're just going to close that up i want to make sure that we know how many categories we have so we're going to dimension some variables the last category rows long as we loop through the categories we're going to need a whole number for that so we're going to use category row and i want to know what row on the getting things done as long so last category row we're going to focus on the admin right? we need to determine what our last category row is it is 12 in this case but i need to do based on g so we're going to use g 16 and xl up so g 16 and xl up row this is going to get us our last category row once we have that we're going to put that into a variable called last category row if for some reason it's less than six that means the user has not added any categories and if that is the case we can exit the sub now we're going to turn our focus to the getting things done this workbook here gtd i've given it both the sheet name and the code name of gtd to simplify it so getting things done is our worksheet that we're going to be turning the focus first thing we want to do is i want to clear any contents on these cells i want to clear any categories that we might have previously added all the way from h3 all the way through h12 i also want to clear any interior colors remember individual colors here are going to be associated with the category so we need to do those two things so the first is clear existing categories the second thing is to clear the colors so remove any colors we'll do background colors so that's clear background colors okay so once we have that we can do that using interior color index equals none so this line of code is going to remove all the colors there now we're going to get ready to run our loop because i need to loop through all the categories so the category row is going to be from six to the last category so based in the admin screen we're simply starting on six in column g and going to the last one and we're going to loop through these and now we can easily copy and paste it but the reason i want to loop it is because i want to grab the color from column h as well so we're going to do that so the first thing we're going to do is i want to know our getting things done row gtd row so our first row here we see is row three and our first row here is row six so to go from six to three we're just going to deduct three so our first row here is three so we're simply going to subtract three to get our gdd row once we have that again there's only two things we need to do is place the category name and change the color so the first thing is that category name so we're going to place that category name it's going to come directly from the admin in column g and it's going to go into column h of our getting things done so here we're focusing on where we're getting it from and where we're placing it now we don't need to call out the sheet here because we've already done it here so this is going to place the category name and this next line will take care of the color so background color now where are we going to get that background color we're getting that background color directly from the admin screen column h going to get that interior color and we're simply going to color the interior of the cell in column h so that's all we just need to loop so when do we want to run that? i want to run this macro anytime we make a change to here so if i make a change to anything on here is exactly when i want to run that macro so if i decide to add a category that macro is going to run automatically how do we know that well we're going to go inside the admin screen on the sheet directly because it's a change event so when i go into the worksheet and i go into the change event is exactly where i want to run that macro and it's going to be the worksheet change event that gets created so inside this and it's not just going to be if they change any cell it's only going to be if they change very specific cells and those cells are going to be all the way from g6 all the way through g15 so those are the cells that i want to focus on g6 through g15 if the user makes a change to any of those cells not intersect nothing 
nothing and not cancel each other out. It's a double negative. So that basically means if they make a change to anything in this range, then run this macro categories refresh. That's the macro I just said. So all we would need to do is just, let's say we added weekends here. It's going to automatically run it here. So we're going to look back in here and we see that automatically has added. We didn't add a color to weekends, which is fine. Perfect. So it ran it. It did put the colors and it put the categories directly in here. So if we decide to remove the weekends, it's going to run it one more time and the weekends are going to be gone, which is perfect. Okay, very good. So we see that we have the categories, but now what I would like to do is when I make a selection on a category, I want to one, put whatever subcategories are here, and then I want to load some information up. And that's going to be a selection change event. So when I make a selection, I want to load the subcategories here and load all the information, any type of task that might be associated with those individual subcategories. And that means any tasks that are customer, if it's pending, staff, vendors, or whatever we have selected, here's all the subcategories that we have. And so we want to make sure that we add those in. So how do we do that? Well, of course, that's going to happen on selection change. So when I make a selection change, we want something to happen. And that's going to happen right on our getting things done. So of course, I've commented everything out. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to control A and I'm going to uncomment that out here. So we're going to use this uncomment block right here. It's going to uncomment those out. Now, it's going to be here, the selection change event. Of course, we can get that in from worksheet and then selection change event. That's how we're going to get this. So first of all, if we edit, there's no task here. We don't have to worry about that yet. We're focused on category selection. If the user makes a selection change from H3 through H30, that's what I want to focus on right here. So starting in H3 all the way, actually H12, it should be H12. I originally had another design, so it should be H12. Let's update that here. Eventually I had three rows I made change. So just those is all we need. And I want to make sure that H and the target row is not empty. So that means if they select on something that's empty, we don't want anything to happen only when they make an actual selection. When they do make an actual selection, I want to do a few things. First thing I want to do is to mention the category row as long. I want to know the row that's associated with that category the subcategory column. I need to know the column that's associated with. This is column 10, I believe, excuse me, column 11. So I wanna know the column that's associated with those, 11, 12. That's very important because I need to know what column we are gonna make. Once I know the column, I can grab those subcategories because it is those subcategories that I need to place directly up here. So that's very important. So we need to know that. And I also need to know the subcategory row. We need to loop through all the subcategories and I need to know the column that's associated inside the GTD. That's very important. So we need all that information. What column is associated? Column J, K, all the way over. Okay, so that's where we're going to put those in. I also need to know the category name and the category color is string. I want to color these top row based on the color that's already selected. So we're going to grab that too. First thing we want to do is clear any contents and clear any colors from J2 through S2. So that means all the way, I want to clear anything that might be here. And I also want to remove any colors that might be associated here. So to do that in those two lines of code, we're going to clear subcategories, clear sub categories and we're going to also clear colors clear background colors okay so once we have those background colors cleared i also want to then set that category name and that category name is going to be based on column h and that target row that row that you've just selected target means the selected how do i know it's selected because we're inside the selection change event so the row in which the user selected and column h that together will give us that category name, right? When they make a selection here, something's going to happen. Once we do that, I'm going to put that category name inside this variable. I also want to take that category name and I want to put it directly inside B7. I had mentioned it before. I've got some conditional formatting here that is going to help us. So I want to put that inside here. How does that happen? So if I put urgent here, all of a sudden you're going to see urgent change to blue. So how did we do that? Well, that was already with some conditional formatting. Let's go over that rule now. It's relatively simple. We're going to go into conditional formatting and I'm going to manage the rule. It's using and because I want to make sure it's not blank. So there's going to be two rules. One, B7 must not be blank. B7 must be equal whatever's in H3 and every row that's associated. That's very important. Notice there's no dollar sign before the three. And that means it's because it's relative to the row. So when the applies to starts in row three, it means it's going to be every row all the way to 12. So that means that whatever name we put in here, if it's correct, it is going to give it a certain format. And that format is basically this gradient blue with a bold white font. So that's how we do it. So the first thing we want to do is I want to know which category has been selected. So we're going to give it that very distinct color and font. 
And as soon as that category name appears in here inside B7, V be able to take care of that. So if I change this to learning, obviously you're going to see the selected item change. Okay, so that's going to be very important. So that's going to go inside B7. Now what I want to do is I want to grab the row. Now I've got a named range here that I've created called categories. So we're going to look in the formulas, name manager, and we're going to look at the named range called categories. I've also got one for subcategories, which I will get into in just a moment. So we see that we have a named range using the offset for all the categories that exist. So basically I want to extract the row. So how do I know the row? Well, we can use the find principle. I want to know the row of that. So to do that, in case it's not found, we're going to wrap it in on air resume next and on air go to zero. So we're going to set the category row. It's based on the admin because that's where our named range exists. Here's our named range. Here's our find. What am I looking for inside that named range? I'm looking for the category name. I'm looking for values in a whole and I want to extract the row. What row is it? Is it six, seven, eight, nine, right? So if I know the row, if I know that this is row six and I need to get to this column 11, so today is row six, but I need to know what column I simply add five. Then I know the column. If this is row seven and this is row 12, I simply add five to get to the column. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If it's zero, that means it's not been found. We can exit the sub because that's very important. We need a criteria here. If I'm going to be running an advanced filter inside our task database, and I need to know all of our tasks for today, right? Where the category is today, I need to run an advanced filter. So I'm going to set that criteria right here. We'll be getting to that. So that means it's going to return only those tasks in which the category is today. So we want that setting 03. This is our advanced filter. I'll be going over that in a moment. It's going to return all the information, but only four categories of today. So very important. So we need to set that criteria and that's going to be in our task database 03. So we're going to do that with this line of code. We're going to set our category criteria task database 03 equals the target value category name would work just as fine. It's the same thing category name. We've, you know, there's so many ways to do that. The one we change category name H and target row, so many different ways to get to the same value H and the target row is exactly the same thing as target value. So we could use the category name. We could use the target value either way. It's fine. So now what we want to do is we want to set that category column. Remember, if I'm going to get all of the subcategories. I need to loop through them, but I need to know what columns associated. All we need to do is take the row and add five. And that's exactly what we're doing here. The subcategory column inside the admin screen is equal to the category row plus five. This is our subcategory column. Now that we know the subcategory column, I also want to get the color. I want to extract that color and I'll put it into a string variable. Where's our category color? It's right here on column H. And we already know that the row is associated with that. So it's based on that category row. We're going to get that interior color and we're going to put it in this variable called category color. Now, why do we need that? Because not only do I want to set the subcategory names here, but I also want to color them according to the category that we set. So that's very important. So we want to put that inside a variable. Now we're ready to load the subcategories. I need to know what the last row is. What is the last row? It's different, right? This one has a last row of 13. This one has a last row of 11. This one, a nine. So I need to determine the last row as we loop through these subcategories. So to do that, we're going to do the last row is going to be based on the admin. 16 is just the last cell. 16 is here. So I want everything above that. So now that we know that, we're going to determine based on that subcategory column and XLM. This is going to be the last subcategory row. So I want to know that. And I'm going to put that into this variable called last row because I'm going to need to loop through that. If for some reason the last row is less than six, then we're going to exit the sub. For example, like these don't have any subcategories. There's no categories. So there's nothing there. So we wouldn't have anything to loop through. What we're ready to do now is we're going to run our loop. So we're going to use a for next loop for the subcategory row, which is a long variable from six to the last row. So basically we're starting out here and we're looping to the last row. First thing what I want to do is I want to get the column that's associated with that. Where's it going to go? If I take a look inside this column equals column, what column is that? That's column 10. So if I know that that's column 10 and I know that this is row six, we simply need to add four. So we're adding four to get to that. So our GTD column is simply our subcategory row starting on six plus four It's going to be our GTD columns. So we're going to put that in here. Now we're ready to add in the value. So we're going to put in the sub category name. So we're putting in the subcategory name. Where's it going to go? It's going 
inside all right I should probably do this here making sure oh, that's we're on the sheet so cells it's going to go in row two so the reason we're using cells and not range is because the columns are dynamic right we don't know the columns but we know the rows we're always putting it in row two so it's either going to be here column 10 11 12 either way so we're simply using row two and then that column is going to be dynamic so using that column what is it equal it equals the admin cells the subcategory row and the subcategory column so this is our subcategory name so again it's coming from here our subcategory row and our subcategory column we're simply going to loop and add each one and then for each one that we add here in j2 or k2 we're going to add the name and we're going to give it a specific color so that is the next line of code so we're going to give it this background color now we've put that into a string variable which we have here so again that same cell but this time we're changing the interior color that interior color is going to be the category color and i'm just going to comment this out because i don't want to load the category task i just want to run this macro so when i make a selection on this it's going to automatically change you see how we've done that i make a selection on this it's going to automatically add so we can see how that's automatically working just fine it changes the color perfect just as we did and it's going to load all the subcategories so today has many if we take a look at this it loads all the subcategories all the way from calls to make to writing so here all the way from calls to make all the way to writing and it's got the appropriate color which is this orange so everything's looking perfect okay now that we have that i also want to add in all the tasks that are associated remember when we click today we look in our task database i've got to add in the information here so i want to create an advanced filter for all the tasks for that and then i want to loop through the task and i want to put them in their correct places so how do we do that well the first thing what we're going to do is we're simply going to duplicate this sample and we're going to put it inside the macro however we need to give this a very specific name so we can duplicate it so we're going to give this a name i'm going to call this sample task and then i'm going to give this a name called sample task edit so this one's going to be called sample task edit okay i do would like to group them together i want them all in a single group so that this is going to be a little bit easier to work with as we duplicate it i'm going to click on the shape here i'm going to hold down the control and it's going to select both and i'm going to group them and i'm going to call this sample task group perfect and i also going to make sure that we are not moving and sizing the cells so i'm going to go into the properties and don't move or size with cells just for the time being although we will individually ungroup it and regroup it again inside vba now the reason i want to regroup it is because i want to add an icon so it's going to be this meeting icon the phone icon the email report idea research and so on so whatever icon we've assigned to that i would like to have that also in there so this is what's going to be duplicated so let's go into the macro now if we take a look inside the one we just commented out it was this called load category tasks that's the one that i want to focus on here so where is that located let's go to our gdd macro here and load category tasks that's what i want to focus on right here so the first thing what we want to do is we want to dimension the type row as long but that's very important because i want to grab the icon i've given these icons individual names based on the row so this is on row six it's called icon six this is on row seven it's called icon seven so i need to know what row if i find that there's a task for a report and i need to grab the icon if i know that it's on row nine then i automatically know the icon name it's going to be called icon nine so that row is very important okay so we're going to need that row we also want to make sure that we have the sub category column that's very important as we know which column is going to be based on the subcategory i need to know which column to place that task in so very important to know the column so we'll need that inside a variable and i also want to know the row that's very important if we have multiple tasks within a single subcategory we are going to need to know what row to place it on so we'll need to keep track of what row moving on i also want to know the category color we need to know which color to color those tasks the tasks themselves will be colored based on the category also i need to know the category name the task id the task name what type of a task is it notes associated with that the subcategory also the name of the subcategory the group string as i create a group with that shape so i'm going to add those shapes and create a group and an array that's going to be associated and i'll go over that with you we also need to know the top position and the left position as we place those tasks 
on our grid. So the first thing what we want to do is when we create them, I want to clear out any tasks that might be there. We must also remove. So I want to remove all those. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the shapes in a sheet. And I'm going to look for very specific shapes to do that. I don't want to delete all the shapes on a sheet. I only want to delete those shapes that are associated with the tasks. So to do that, we're going to use the in string command along with a for next loop. So we're going to go for each task shape. Task shapes are shape. We've set them up here in our shapes inside our sheet. I'm calling out the sheet here. So the first thing what I want to do is I'm going to use the task name. So for each one, I'm going to to check the name if inside the name it contains task item that means inside the name of the shape it contains task item if that's the case greater than zero then we're going to delete that also i want to delete all the icons now i want to take all the icons here and i want to bring them over to this sheet once they're here i can then quickly copy them and paste them according to the task type so to do that i want to delete all the icons that's important because if we've added new icons or we've removed icons i want to make sure to take the most updated icons from the admin and i want to bring them into this screen so to do that we first need to remove any icons that may have been added. And so we can do that right here. Icon is greater than zero, then we're going to delete it. So here we're deleting any icons. And also I wanna make sure that we're deleting to task shapes, deleting task shapes. Okay, so once we have that, we certainly wanna wrap it in on air resume next and on air go to zero because if I've already deleted this and then we go to this row, it's not gonna find it, it's gonna create an error. So anytime we have more than one here, we want to add on air resume next and on air this should be on air go to zero go to zero okay that's what i really want so we're clearing out all the shapes and icons then what i want to do that is i want to clear any of the task count now it's very important if i'm adding more than one task here each task is going to be about three rows let's say three rows from three to five is going to be our first task then from six to eight, it's gonna be our second task, but I need to know how many we've added. If we've only added one, I need to know the next task is gonna be right around here. So what I'm gonna do is I need to keep track of that. So how can I keep track of that? Well, I, what I wanna do is I wanna create a number on our sheet so we can keep track of what number we're at. If we're at task one, then two, and then three, and so on and so forth. So we need to find somewhere to do that. So I'm gonna use row 50 right down here. So I'm gonna select on row 50, and I'm gonna go all the way to column S. I'm just gonna give these a color here, just so we can differentiate. And we'll just give it a little bit of a grid. The color is not necessary, but it just helps us identify. That's kind of an admin. Of course, we can hide this. So basically, every time I add a task, I'm gonna increase the value of whatever's inside these columns. If this is a one, then I know to place this task on row six if it's a two i need to know to place it on row nine so that's going to help us so that they don't overlap each other when i have multiple tasks inside a single subcategory so the first thing we want to do is clear the contents of there so j50 through s50 we're going to clear all the tasks there next up what i want to do is i want to grab that color i'm going to use the color whatever's in j2 that's going to be the interior color how do i know that because remember we've colored the subcategories already so j2 is going to already have the color we need so we can just take the color whatever's here and put that into a string variable and that's exactly what we're going to do here so our category color is equal to whatever's in j2 set the category color now this is important because each individual task shape are going to be given this unique color so we want to make sure to put that inside a variable okay we also want to add the icons. so now what i want to do is i want to take all the icons here i want to determine the last row if the last row is 11 i'm going to run a loop from 6 to 11 and i'm going to look for an icon that's called icon 6 or icon 7 or icon 8 and i want to simply copy that and paste it and put it somewhere on this sheet and then we want to hide it we don't need to see those so to do that we are going to determine the last row inside our admin screen based all the way from 16 up I want to determine the last row of our task types. So we can do that using this admin B16. This is our last type row. So once we have that, if for some reason it's less than six, we don't have any types and we can skip that. Okay, so we can go down here to no types. If we do have types, I'm gonna run a loop. The icon row is equal to six to the last row. So we're running a loop. Now what we wanna do is I wanted to see if that icon exists. So we do have a shape, it's called type icon here as a shape. We're gonna set that all the way right about here. So setting the type icon here equals the admin icon in the icon row. If it doesn't exist, it could create an error. So again, I've wrapped it in on and resume next and on error go to zero. Then we're simply going to check, does it exist? If not, 
type icon is nothing. Once again, the two not and nothing cancel each other out. So basically we're saying if the type icon exists, if this variable contains that icon, then we know to add it. So in case there's an issue, I'm going to go to on air, go to no data. We could probably go to no types, but we can skip that just in case. So now what we're going to do is I'm simply going to take that icon and I'm going to copy it. I want to make sure that our GTD sheet has been activated. If not, it's going to activate it automatically. Then what we're going to do inside a and the icon row plus 15, I'm just simply adding it down here. So right about around here, I simply want to add it in so we're going to select something and that helps us place that icon somewhere around in column a so paste and then what we're going to do is we're going to hide it so we're going to hide the icon hide icon okay great and then on air go to zero in case there's any issues with the icons so what this little loop is going to do is going to take all those icons that you see in the admin and it's going to place them right down here it's not going to change their name it's just going to be called icon six seven eight nine ten eleven so on and so forth however we're just going to bring them over into the sheet and that makes our macro run a lot faster since i don't need to do that and take them directly from the admin so that completes our loop and adds all of our icons now what we want to do is i want to clear a variable i'll be using this variable again so i'm going to clear it out last row now we're going to focus on the task database and as i told you before once we added this category we want to run an advanced filter based on that i want to know all of our tasks associated with today so to do that we're going to run an advanced filter all the way from a3 h to the last row our criteria is going to be that category 02 through 03. We're going to have those results come here all the way from V all the way through AC. So we're going to run an advanced filter. To do that, I need to determine the last row of data. If our last row is less than four, we're going to exit the sub. Exit on no data. Exit on no data. I'm sure we have data. We're going to run that advanced filter, as I just mentioned to you, from column A3 all the way through H and the last row. So a3 through h in the last row running an advanced filter we want to copy the results to another location we want to set the criteria which we've already set 02 through 03 that's that criteria here our results are going to come directly all the way through v2 through ac2 so v2 all the way through ac2 our results are going to come down here just like this v2 through ac2 once we determine that we have data, we're going to determine the last results row based on column V. So I want to know that last row of data here at 17, because I'm going to have to loop through all of this. So if for some reason our last results row is less than three, we have no data, it's going to skip everything and go right to here. So once we are sure that we do have data, we're ready to loop through the data that we have. So we're going to run the result row equals three to the last result row. We're simply running a loop. And I want to extract a lot of information and I want to put it into the associated variables. So the first one is the task ID that's going to come directly inside column V in our result row. The task name is going to come from column W. The task type that's going to be in column X. We also need the subcategory name that's going to come from AA. And I want the notes to come in AC. So also want to know what is the subcategory column. That's very important that we know. If I know this subcategory here is emails to send. I want to know what column it's associated here. I need to know that it's on this column here, which is column K, otherwise known as column 11, right? It's very important because I want to know where to place that task. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look in all the way from J to all the way through up to S, which is 10. I'm going to look in this range. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for that subcategory. So we are going to do just that here. The subcategory column equals the GTD, range I2 through S2, that should be J2 actually, make sure that's J, not I, J2 through S2, we're gonna look for the subcategory, we're looking in values and we wanna extract the column, extract column. If it's not found, it could create an error, so we've wrapped it in on air resume next, and on air go to zero. If for some reason the subcategory is zero, then we can go to the next task, it's gonna skip all the way down here, and go to right here, next task, where we're skipping everything. If I don't have a column to place it in, then that could mean that we have an old category or something like that. So we don't know what column to place it. If it is not zero, then we can move forward. So we would move forward here. We're ready to create a shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shape here. It is called sample task group, and I'm gonna duplicate it. To do that, 
GTD sample task group duplicated and we're going to give it a very unique name the task group and the task ID that way we can work with it so now what I want to know is the subcategory row I want to know what row to place it on so if I'm looking here am I going to put it in three six or nine right it's really dependent on what's located in here if there's nothing here in row 50 then we're simply going to put it in row three so how do we do that we can do that with a formula remember I said each task is going to take up about three rows so it's either going to go in three three six nine twelve so on and so forth so to do that we need a small formula so again what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever value is in row 50 and the subcategory column let's say it's zero that means we have not had any tasks yet to that column if it's zero we're going to multiply that times three of course that's going to be zero if I add that to three we're also going to get three let's say we've added one before if it's one one times three is three plus three is six so that's going to help us put it in either row three six nine twelve so each time we add one I'm going to increase the value of this cell right here so this is going to get us our subcategory row we have our column we have our row so now what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to add one value so whatever the current value is in row 50 I'm simply going to add one so we're going to increment this for every single task we add so that way the next one inside this category column is simply going to be and that means make sure those tasks are not going to overlap okay now what we want to do is I want to set that top position that top position is simply going to be based on the subcategory row and the subcategory column I don't want it exactly on top so I'm going to add two this sets our top position so for example if this is our column and this is our row that top position is going to be this top line plus a few pixels down and we also need to set our left position based on the column two so that left position is going to be based also on the same row the same column plus the left position of whatever that is so we're setting the left position we're putting it into these double variables top position or left position once we have all that we are ready to place our shape that group that we just created here that we duplicated we're going to work that the left position is equal to the left position the top position is equal to the top position so we're simply setting the left set left position or set the top position set top position okay so now that we have that I also want to set the width and I like to make the width whatever the column width is I want to set our task but slightly less so I'm just going to use the column width for that so our width is simply equal to the width of that cell the width of that column minus five because I don't want it that big so we're going to subtract a little bit I also want to set the height now the height is simply going to be the current row times three because I wanted about three rows assuming that all your rows are the same height I want to do that so the height is simply equal to the height of a single row times three and then I just want to subtract a little bit I should probably put these in parentheses just to make sure although it didn't make a difference but I want to make sure that it is clear okay so I do want to subtract four out of that because I don't want it exactly to fit I want a little space between them that's all great so now that I've created the correct height I put it in the correct position now what we are going to do is we are going to put some text so we've got this group and I've got this shape inside this group now we haven't changed the shape name the shape name is called sample task so here's what we've done I've duplicated it like that control D I've given the group a name but inside the individual group here is still sample tax and is still sample task edit so I need to change the names I also want to change the text I want to put the task name and then on the next line below I want to put the task notes so that's something that we can do right now inside the code but we need to specify since we are inside a group I need to specify the group and then I need to specify which item inside the group that I want to work with so we're going to use the group items for that right we've already focusing on this group here so this is the group inside that group is group items that sample task first thing I want to do is rename it so I'm going to give it a task item and task ID I want to make sure that everything is unique so once I rename it then what I want to focus on is that specific item I want to give it a text so that item that's just been renamed task item task ID so basically what we're doing is we're taking this we're renaming it to something like task item for whatever that's what we're doing once it's been renamed I want to go in there and I want to update the text accordingly so to do that we can use the text range so the group item text frame text range text is simply equal to the task name then a new line and then the notes so add task text okay great so now what we want to do is we want to specify a color let's say update shape color so now we've already extracted the color we already know what color we're going to be coloring everything because we've got it all the way up here right so the category color here is our color we've already extracted it from j2 so now we simply need to color that so to do that we can simply say group items the task item this one that we just named that fill 
four color RGB. So we're giving that back on a very specific color and it's going to be equal to the category color. We're updating the shape color. Next up, all I want to do is rename the edit. When I click on this edit, I want to actually edit the specific task. So to do that, we want to give it a very unique name. So I'm going to also take this sample task edit. I'm going to give it a brand new name and it's going to be based on the task ID. So to do that, we're going to again using the group sample task edit, we're giving it a new name called task edit and task ID. So rename edit with task ID. So notice the end with pop up. This is my auto hotkey. It's usually good, sometimes a little bit annoying. Then what I really want to do is I also want to add in possibly one of the icons that we duplicated if it's a type of a phone call and I want to put that also in. So we have three items in a group here, but I want to ungroup it. So we would do this, but within VBA, then I want to add inside our little icon here in the upper right. And then I want to regroup it. Okay. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is simply ungroup it. To regroup it, we're going to need a string. So the items inside this is basically the task ID and the task item. So these is the two items that we're going to be grouping. And if we add an icon, we're going to add on to this because I need to know all the items that we're going to be grouping together. So that's very important. And we're going to put that into a string. So to do that, we simply create a string variable with the names of the shapes that are in it and they have to be separated by a comma. So that's very important. So it's going to be in a single string. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to grab that icon. First of all, based on whatever type, it's one of these types. And I want to grab the icon. So to do that, I need to know what row. If it's an email, I need to know it's row eight. So how do we do that? Well, we've got a named range and that named range is called task types. So to do know what row it's on, we're going to set the, I should probably put this just in case it's not found. Okay. So the type row is going to look in the task types. We are going to look for the task type. We've already extracted the task type from right here in column X of our results. So we've already grabbed the task type from here. Now I just simply need to determine what row is it on. And to do that, I'm going to use the find here, the task type. We're going to look in the values and I'm going to extract the row. Again, if it's not found, we need to wrap it in on air, resume next and on air, go to zero. If it is found, it means not zero. Then what we want to do is you want to create that. So again, I want to look on the sheet. Remember we created those icons here and then we hid them. But what I want to do now is duplicate them. So first thing, what I want to do is on air, resume next and on air, go to zero. I want to set the type icon to our sheet icon and the type row. So this is going to set the icon set type icon as long as it's on the sheet and as long as we have the correct name everything's going to be fine so if not type icon is nothing means is the icon found is icon found okay so if it is found then we can continue not and nothing cancel each other out the first thing what i want to do is i want to duplicate that icon and give it a very unique name so we're going to use the type icon dot duplicate name to do that and we're going to give it a name called task icon and the task id remember every single task associated shape has a unique id so that every shape is different and has a different name now once we have that i want to position it basically let's say if i position it right here i want to position it right about on the upper right so to do that, we're going to set the left position based on the current left position plus the width of the entire cell minus 20. So the left position, which is here, plus the entire width, which would be here, minus 20, which is going to move it just a bit back over to the left, 20 pixels. We want to set the top position based on the top position. I want to make sure it's visible. Remember, we hid that icon. So again, we have to make sure it's visible. And I want to assign a macro to it. That macro is going to be able to edit a task. So to do that, we're going to say on action equals task select. Assign a macro. That means when I select it, it's going to add that on. Then what I want to do is remember, I want to group all these shapes together and I now want to include this icon with it. So our group string, which we've already started right up here, we're simply going to add on to that. It is whatever it is currently, which is those two items above, again, separated by a comma, which is the task icon and the task ID. So our group string at this point is made up of three items. It's made up of a task item with task ID. It's made up of a task edit with task ID. And it's also made up of a task icon with task ID. So those three items, we're simply going to group together. Now to group together, what we want to do is we want to create an array. And to create an array, since we've already added a comma in, we can do that using the split command. So our group array, we're going to take that group string, we're going to separate it by a comma. So once we have that, we can simply group it using that array, doing this. GTD shapes range group array. So here's our array of our three different shapes, which we've already created here. We're going to group them together and we're going to create a name called task item group 
task ID, very unique. So that's it, that's all we need to do to create the task. So this macro again is called, or it's a bit of a long macro, called load category task, which we have inside our grid. So now let's uncomment it out. Remember we had it here, load category tasks. So I'm gonna uncomment that out because I want to run that macro. So now when we do that and I select, let's say today, it's gonna load all the associated tasks with that. We see now they're loaded in the individual columns it is automatically set to the right color. It includes the name and of course the notes. So that's how we do it. Very, very cool. There's nothing here, nothing here, and I don't think anything here. So we don't have any data on those. So we just have data here. Okay, good. So now that we see that, I've got some more macros that I'm gonna share with you because we're gonna creating some cool drag and drop too. And we also wanna populate the list here. We can remove this as we don't need it here and we can remove this. Very good, let's continue. Another way to edit, view, and filter tasks is through a list here of tasks. So what I would like to do is have a macro that automatically shows our tasks. However, it would be filtered by very specific names or any other item that we want based on the header category. So we could easily filter based on status, type, category, subcategory, etc. So to do that, of course, we're gonna use an advanced filter and I've created a macro. Now, when is the macro going to run? Well, it's gonna run when I make a change to E4. So let's take a look at that change events. We're gonna go back into the VBA. We're gonna get on the GTD worksheet and we're gonna look up inside our change event, which is up here, worksheet change event. Again, worksheet change event here. So it's gonna be based on E4. So when I make any change, even if it's empty cell, I want to then load the task list. So loading the task list is the next macro. If I right click and go to definition, it's gonna take us directly to that inside our GTD macros here called load task list. First thing we wanna do is clear out a bunch of cells, including column C all the way through F and then down. So what I'm gonna do, I believe I've got a format on here. I'm just gonna change it back to general and then I'll change it back to custom. So what I want is the task ID to show up in column C, which will be hidden, the task name, the type and the status here based on some filters that we set up. So the first thing we want to do is clear any of the previous data that we may have. We're going to turn our focus to the task database. So our task database is here. Now, what we want to do is we want to run an advanced filter based on all the data inside our task database, and then based on very specific criteria. We have search criteria set up in column R. So if we take a look here, We've got a task name and we have does not equal. So this task name is actually based on very specific item that we set in E3 in our GTD worksheet. So for example, if I change in E3, I change it to a task ID. We look inside our task database and it is task ID. If for some reason E3 is left blank is here, we're gonna automatically set it to our task ID, which is also located here in K2. So basically it's gonna set the default in case the user has cleared it out. We always want to have some type of a filter in here. Otherwise we're gonna put in whatever is in E3. So that's gonna be our dynamic header. And then our search value, what is our search value? Now, our search value is gonna be generally based on text. However, if it is based on due date, it's gonna be a date-based filter. So we need to differentiate between all of these and this one. So how can we do that? Well, we can use if. So if, first of all, I wanna know is E3 empty or is E4 empty? What I mean by that is here. If the user has left E3 empty or E4 empty, if either one of those are empty, I simply want to change the value to does not equal. So any of those conditions, we're gonna change it there. Okay, great. Now, what if it is a date? How do we know if it's a date? Well, what we can do is if the user has changed three here, equals KA, meaning due date. If we're searching by due date, I just wanna set whatever due date is entered. So E4, this is the value that I want. So that means if it's a date value, I just want to return the value. However, if it's a text value, I want to use the wildcards before and after, meaning containing. So if they put in, let's say budget, it will return budget analysis. If they put in name, it will return in something that contains name. So here, if we're equal to the date, which is located here inside K8, then we're simply gonna return whatever's in here. Otherwise, we're gonna use the asterisk 
and whatever they have put in E4, and then an asterisk, so containing that. So that way, it's gonna automatically show that right here. Now it's gonna simply return all the values. Now, all I really need is the task ID, task name, type, and status. So all I really need is this. I don't need anything else. So that's gonna be inside our macro. So we're gonna focus on our task database, determine the last row, and if it's less than four, we're gonna exit the sub, no data. We're gonna run our advanced filter all the way up through, excuse me, it should be H. So let's just set that to H, that's sufficient enough. Actually, we're only gonna to go to task type and status. So we really don't need the category, subcategory, due date, but we do have the criteria. So we're gonna set it to H. H is the last possible one. Next up, our criteria is gonna be R2 through R3. And we want the results V2 through Y. V2 all the way through Y. I only really want these four columns of data. We're gonna bring it. All we need is the ID in column C, the name, the type, and the status. So really a total of four columns. That's all I really want. Okay, great. I need to determine the last row using column V, just like we did before. If it's less than three, we're gonna exit the sub. I would also like to sort the data. In this case, I wanna sort it by the newest first. So the newest task that was added, I want that on top and the earliest on the bottom. So we can use task ID, but we're gonna use descending. So the first thing we wanna do is if there's just a single row of data that's been returned, we don't need to sort. So we're gonna check for that. If the last result's less than three, that means we have no data, we can exit the sub. If we have just one row of data, meaning the last result row is less than four, then we can go to no sort. We're gonna skip a sort and we're gonna go right down here. If there are two or more rows of data, we are gonna run a sort. Base it on our task database, sorting, clearing any sorts that might exist. We're gonna add a key and that key is gonna be V3, our task ID. We want it descending so the newest tasks are added first. We're gonna set the entire range V3 through Y. That's the only data that we want in the last results row. And we're gonna apply that sort. Then all we need to do in a single line of code is bring those results over. So to do that, we're gonna take whatever's in V3 through Y in the last results row. And we're gonna bring it into C7 through F in the last results row plus four. We need to add four because we're starting on row seven here. It's coming from row three here. So we need to differentiate between that. Okay, once we do that, it's all gonna be added in. So when does that happen again? It happens on change event. So if I decide, let's say we're not gonna have any filters, just double click here and exit out of it and it's automatically going to add the list. Very cool. Now we see that we have the task ID here. That's very, very helpful because when I make a selection, I wanna paste whatever task ID here and I'm gonna place it directly inside B2. However, we do not need to see these task IDs. So what we can do is select the whole column and change it to a custom format with two semicolons. Since they're only numbers, we can use two semicolons. If it were alphanumeric, meaning text and numbers, we could use three semicolons. So I'm gonna change that custom font to two semicolons. What that's gonna do is simply gonna hide the data. Now it's still here if we select on it, however, we can't see it, which is exactly what we want. Now. When we clear the filter, what do we want to do? All I really need to do in this macro is simply clear the data here. Once I clear it, it's automatically gonna refresh the list. So if I take a look in here, clear filter, I can copy this. We're gonna clear those two fields. When I clear those two fields, it's automatically gonna run the macro because it's a change event. So we're gonna assign the macro and we're gonna paste that in there and click okay. Now, when I clear the filter, it's gonna do just that and refresh the list. Perfect, so that's exactly what I want. Very, very good, so we've got that clear filter. Now we got the load category, so that's already set. We've covered that, so everything on the GTD has been done. Okay, very, very cool. So what we want to do now is I wanna be able to edit the task. When I make a selection, I want something to appear here and then I wanna be able to edit that. So how does that happen? Well, the first thing what we have is a user form that I've created already. If we take a look in this task form here, I've already created a user form. Now this is gonna be the task name, the task type, and if we look inside the properties, we have a combo box on this user form. That combo box here is gonna be based on the row source. So if we look down to row source here, we see that it's task types. It's the same as our named range. We have the same thing for status. We take a look here and we see that we have one in the row source for our task status. So task status right here. Next up, we have categories. Inside categories, we have another row source it's going to be based on our categories named range. Now we have another one here called subcategories. Now this is kind of nice. Now let's take a look inside this and it's called subcategories. But if you remember correctly, when we run this form, that subcategories is going to be dynamic. Remember, when I select a category, I want the list of subcategories to be dynamic 
based on whatever category it was selected. So how can we do that? Well, again, when is that going to happen? When I make a change to a category, when I make a change to this category, that subcategory, this named range here is going to change. So let's take a look at this subcategories. However, it all starts when I make a change to category. So if I double click this, what that's going to do is going to change to field four. When I make a change to field four, I want something to happen. If for some reason the value of that is not empty, what I want to do is inside B6, remember I told you we were going to go over this, in B6, I want to know the number of the item we selected. If it's the first one that's been selected, which is the field four index, the first one's going to be zero, but I don't want to show zero. I want to show one. So I'm going to add one to that. So the first category is going to be one. The second category is going to be two. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put that directly in B6. Remember, we had something in B6 here. If it's four, of course, would be the fourth category here, which is going to be learning. So this will be one, two, three, and four. Now that's very important. So I want to know what's the fourth one. Now, why is that number very important? Because I need to know what column subcategories column. And we have a named range to help us with that. So let's take a look inside this named range. We're going to go into the formulas, name manager, and we're going to look in that subcategories. And we have a formula that's going to be associated with that. We're going to use the office so we can zoom in here. So the admin, J5 insider admin, it's going to be the first one. So we're going to add that. So now the reason is J5 is because based on B6, we're going to move it over. Is it one, which is today, or is it two pending or three urgent, right? So that number in B6 becomes very important. We need to know how far to move that over. We're going to move it one row down. How many columns over are we moving it? It's based on the number that was selected. Then we're simply counting all the ones inside that column. It's a bit big. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm determining. This is my starting point. I'm going to move one column over. Why would I move one column over? If this is one, I'm going to move one column over. If it's four, I'm going to move two, three, four columns over. Then what I need to do is I need to determine inside this column how many items are here. So we're going to count A for that. So that's what I did inside that formula. I know it's a little bit confusing. So we're determining how many columns to move over, how many items to count inside that column, and it creates a dynamic named range called subcategories. We'll change this to one. If I change this to one, what it's going to do, it's going to use this column here is what I really want. So we're going to go into the formulas and take one more look at it and go into the subcategories. And we're going to use the tab and we see that now subcategories based on that one, all I did was change the number and it's now around the one. So we're simply counting all the items in that and we're using the indirect formula to do that. So that way it's really nice because if we look at here, every time we change, so if this is changed to today, then we look at the sub, we see it's calls to make meetings research, right? However, if I change it to pending, right, we have a completely different list, customer staff approval. And once again, if I change it to urgent, so that all happens on the change. So we have a dynamic dependent dropdown list via the subcategories. So it can be very, very helpful to do that. And so we have that built inside directly in our user form, and it all starts with a change on category. Okay, so our subcategory row source is based on that. So we look inside the row source and we see it's based on that subcategory. So we have a dynamic list based on that. Now, each one of our fields are given a name. So we see this is called field one. Let's move this over here. Field two and all the way up to field seven. There are distinct names and that's going to help us loop through those fields when we either save the data to the database or when we add the data to the list. And then I've got unique buttons, one button called save button, one button called cancel button, and one button called delete task. If I double click cancel, all we're simply doing is unloading me. If we're deleting a task, we're going to run a macro called delete task. And if we're saving, we're going to do save and update. Very good. So let's take a look at edit. When we select here, we've got an edit that shows up. Now the name of this is called edit task button. Now, when does that appear? It appears when we make a selection change on something. Obviously, if there's nothing down here, nothing's going to happen only when we actually make a selection change. So let's see exactly how we did that. So we're going to go back into the selection change event, which is here, and we're focused on D7 all the way through F. And I need to make sure that D contains a value. If it's empty, there's nothing we can do. First thing what I want to do is I want to set task ID. Remember, we have the task IDs located in C. So I want to put that task ID in B. And that's important because when we edit a task, I need to make sure that it is a correct row. I need to know that row, which is in B3. So to do that, we're going to take whatever's in C and the target row, and we're going to place it inside B2. That's going to calculate that task database row 
located in B3. I also want that edit button to show up. So to do that, we're going to use the left range G. It's going to show up on the target row in column G and also the top. And also we want to make it visible. If I select anything else, it's going to be hidden. Now, how do we do that? Because up here, this is on any selection change, regardless of any cell inside the worksheet. If it's visible, I'm simply going to hide it. So we're hiding it when we select anything. And then we're only showing it if user makes a selection change inside a given cell with the value in column D. And then we're going to make sure it's displayed. We've also assigned a macro to that. If I right click that and I click assign macro, we see that the macro again is called task edit. It is this macro that we're going to go into now. I've got a module called task macros and this one's called task edit. Now this one's a little bit tricky because I'm going to do two things. I'm going to either edit it from here or I have another way. It is the same macro. If I select here, I want to make sure that we're adding the macro here. So how do we do that? Now we could add it here. If I add it to here, we can do that too. The same macro. So we're going to right click here and then we can, we can go in this given workbook and we're going to click on task edit. Now we can also do that in the macro click. Okay. We refresh the screen here. We refresh everything. So we've duplicated it. When we duplicate this edit, the macro gets duplicated. And now when we right click and we click assign macro, we see that the task edit has been done. Also, it is the same macro. When I decide I'm going to edit this, I want to make sure that I can edit the individual task by this. So we understand that that same macro is going to run when we select an individual task here or when we select an individual task here. So that's the macro we're going to go over right now. First thing we want to do inside this macro, I want to know, is it here that we've selected or is it here that we've selected? So how do we know? Well, this name of the shape that called it, it's going to help us, right? This shape is called edit task button. This name of the shape that called it is called task edit 17 or whatever the number is. So we know if in string application caller task edit is greater than zero, if it contains the word task edit, then we know it's one of these shapes here. However, if it's something like edit task, right? It's different. So this is task edit. This is edit task. I could probably change that a little bit to make it more clear. So we know that this is from sub category shapes. So in that case, what I want to do is I want to know that task ID. So how do I know that? That is going to be inside B2. So inside B2, I want to put the ID of that task. How do we know what ID is? We've given it a name called task edit 13. We know that 13 is the ID. So if I remove the task ID, it's going to leave us with 13 and I can place that 13 directly. So if I click on this, we see that automatically 13 went into B2. So to do that, we are simply going to use the replace function. The name of the shape it called is application caller. I'm going to take the name and I'm going to replace task edit and I'm going to place it with nothing. When I replace it with nothing, it's going to leave only the ID to be placed directly into B2. That is only if it's task edit. Otherwise, our selection change event is automatically going to put the task edit here. So we've already got it here. B2 is already going to contain the correct task ID and B3 is already going to contain the correct row. So we can just extract from there. So now if for some reason B3 is empty, we need to let the user know to please select a task to edit. We're going to set the task row to whatever is in B3. Now we're going to focus on that task form. So the idea is this, I know the row that it's on now, right? We've put it in a variable. So starting in column two, going all the way to column seven, I want to make sure that all the information in this given row is put into the individual fields inside our form. So field one is going to take on the name, field two is going to take on the type and so on and so forth, all the way to the notes. So how do we do that? We can do that through data mapping. So we're going to run a loop from two to eight here and then we're going to set the task field now this is a control we've already defined it as a control up here right here task field as a control so that's going to be very important so we're going to set the task field as a control and we're going to set it based on the remember our first one is field one so if our column task name is in column two but its field name is one all i'm going to do is take the column which is two minus one so this is going to be one so we're going to go loop all the way from field one to field seven columns two through eight and we're going to set that then all we need to do is take the value of whatever's in the database under the task row and under the task column and place it in the field value so these four lines of code 
we'll simply take all the information from the database and put it into our form regardless of how many fields we have in our form as long as the form names are easily named field one two three four and so on and so forth also actually i don't want to display the user from here i'm going to display it down here i don't think i'm going to go into this macro in too much in detail it's quite confusing so we're using this code up here all you need to do is copy this code here this is going to help us place that user form at a very specific part and basically what i want to do is use a macro called task show form let's go right here so this macro is basically going to place it based on a location if it's add new button in other words if we're using an add new i might as well assign that now because i want that form to show up look the form's going to show up down here which is nice the form's going to show up down here which is nice we haven't assigned this to the add new assign that macro and then task add new or i want it to show up here so if it's add new i want it to show up here so how do we do that so application caller add new button let's name that although it showed up here but i want to make sure we name it so we're going to then show the shapes and you see that select item i want to make sure to give them unique names so all the way down here both of them now the reason that i'm naming it from here is because i want to name both of them so if we're going to name the same name to two different shapes we're going to use this selection pane so now we see it's going to show up exactly in the same place so if the application caller equals add new i didn't even name it right add new button so let's do it here add it here and add it here it's just the default position which turns out to be correct but now it's correct okay so it's a little bit down here so we can place it anywhere we want we're using f4 but i think it would be better to be placed under d3 let's take a look at that and make that update so if the application call equals add new button let's change that to d3 so it's going to take the left position of a certain cell and place that directly under so we're setting the top position setting the left position to very specific so now add new task it's going to place that right here i like that that looks better however what if it's something else if it's something else i want to place it based on the shape this is kind of nice so based on the shape that called it whatever shape that called it i'm going to place it to the lower right of that so notice the shape that called it is here and we're placing it on the lower right so it's kind of a nice way to do that so we're going to use the application caller meaning the name of the shape that called it i want to know the bottom right cell the top position of that and that's going to be the top position or the left position of the shape that called it so that user form is going to open up just to the lower right of the particular shape position that called it kind of nice and then everything else is just kind of sets that form position and then we're going to show the form so that's it that's all we need to do for show the form it's kind of a nice idea to do that great so we went over that so that's basically going to position our user form exactly where we want it let's continue on add new is a macro that we just assigned all I'm going to do is clear B2. I want to clear that. And then what I want to do is I want to run a macro called task show form. So task show form, of course, is the one that we just went over right here. So adding the new task is going to do just that. It's going to clear it out and it's going to open it up. Okay, very good. So now that we have that, we also want to go over, let's take a look here, task edit. We know that we've already covered that and we want to save. If I make a change to any, let's uh, add and make a change to this one right here. Email, I want to set a status on that one. Let's say on hold and I want to save it. I want to make sure that one, it changes and we also want to update the list. So that's going to happen on task saver update. That is the macro that's assigned to our user form button here. If we remember correctly that save task we double click on this we see task save update so that's the macro that runs so let's go over that macro right now i'm going to focus on that user form i want to make sure that at least the task has a name if there's no name to the task we shouldn't allow the user to save it so to do that if the field value one this is our task name equals empty then let the user know to please add a task name and we're going to exit the sub so i want to determine is it a new or an existing how do we know this should be changed to b3 so if b3 is empty remember when we add a new task we're clearing out b2 so we see that b3 is empty however if we're editing an existing task we see that b3 has a value so we know that there's a database row so that differentiators in b3 b3 is going to tell us whether it's new or it's existing we're going to use that if b3 equals empty we know it's a new task 
We need to get the first available row, the task row. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever's in B4, that's that next task ID that we put in there, and we're going to place that in that first available row in column A. However, if it's an existing task, all I need to do is extract the task row directly from B3. Regardless whether it is a new or an existing task, we're simply going to reverse data mapping. We're setting the field just like we did before, but this time we are going to take whatever's inside the field value and place it directly into the database. Very simple. So data mapping, very easy for saving user from data. Then I want to run a few macros. I want to update the macro that's going to update these shapes. And I want to update the macro this. So those two macros we went over already, which is load task list, update the task list. I want to update the category, load category tasks. And I want to unload, I want to clear that user form. So that's it. That's all we need to do to run that. And that's how we add and update tasks. If we're deleting a task, all I need to do is ensure that the user wants to delete the task. If B3 is empty, we're going to go to not saved. We're going to extract the task row, which is in B3. We're going to delete it from the database. I'm going to run the macro to reload the tasks and we're going to unload the task form. I should probably run both of these actually. Let's run both of these. Just want to make sure and that's it so let's take a look at that let's add a new task let's just put it in called task to be deleted and then we'll set a task type here and since we already have open today so we're going to set the task type phone call and then we're going to put the status is pending the category will be today and we'll set the subcategory as calls to make so that it shows up and now we can save that task where we want to make sure that that task shows up it showed up right here it showed up also right here so we have it in two different places i can edit it from here which is nice i can also edit it from here which is nice and i want to delete the task so i'm going to delete the task are you sure we want to delete yes okay perfect so it's been cleared off from here it's no longer here perfect so it worked just nice okay saving our work so far okay last up is the ability to drag and drop our tasks if i want to select on a task i may want to assign a new category i want to assign a task type and i want to assign a task status so we can do that by moving it over wherever i want and it will automatically be changed so how do we do that? Well, the first thing is I want to assign a macro. When I make a selection on one of these tasks, I need a macro for that. If I want to do that, the best thing to do is either assign it through VBA or I can assign it to the sample. Once the sample gets duplicated, the macro will also be duplicated along with that. So to do that, I'm going to right click, assign the macro, and I've got a macro already created called task select right here. So I'm going to click OK. Now notice that there's no macros assigned to that, although there was one with the icon here. However, if I select today one more time, refresh it. Now when I hover over it, we see that there's a macro that's been assigned. Like I said, what I want to do is I want to be able to select something and I want to be able to drag it over within a given period of time and have it automatically change to that. We see now that it's calls to make. If we look at it, we see that it's already calls to make. I also want to be able to assign a task. So if I select here again, and I decide I want to put that inside an idea, and I just drag it over, I make sure the upper left corner is within the cell that I want to drag it. Once that happens, it's automatically been updated. I can select here, and we see that it is now idea. Likewise, if I want to have a status which is currently on hold, but maybe I want to mark it completed, I want to be able to drag and drop this into the completed area. So to do that, I could just drag it here to the completed and it's automatically going to be updated like this. And we edit the task, we see it is now completed. So how do we do that? Again, everything happens on that first selection. So we're going to assign the macro again. We see task select, we edit that, and it's going to take us inside the module called drag and drop. The first item is called task select. That is the macro that has been assigned to everything. And the idea with this is when I make a selection, what do I want to happen? The first thing is I want to put that task ID directly in B9. So if we see here, this shape is called task item 16. So if I make a selection change on that, that ID is going to go into 16. I also want to know the database row that's associated with that, which is 19 here. Actually, that should be a formula here. There it is. So there's a macro running. That's why it didn't show up. I want to know the left position of that. And I also want to know the top position. And I want to know whether it's been moved or not. So that way, when we move it, we can check to see if the position has been changed. So that's going to all happen inside this task select. So this macro sets the selected shape when a user selects a shape. So we're going to focus on the GTD sheet. We're going to get that task ID. Now I need to replace that task ID. Now the interesting thing is whether they select, let's select out of there, the icon itself or whether they select on the shape, we have the same macro assigned. So if we see that this shape name, that's a macro running right now, this is called task item 12. So we have eight characters and the number. 
This one, let's get the icon here, select on that. This one is called, let's click in here, task icon 12. Again, eight characters and then the task ID. So if I remove the first eight characters, regardless of what they've selected, it is automatically going to leave us with the task ID. It is that task ID that I want to put inside B9. So we're gonna do that here, that task ID. We're gonna use the replace. We're going to take the name of the shape they called it because we don't know if it was the task icon or we don't know if it's the task shape. And we're going to take the left the first eight characters and we're going to replace them with nothing. So if I take the first eight character, replace them with nothing, that's going to leave us directly with that task ID. I'm then going to take that task ID and I'm going to place it inside B9. Again, I want to set the left positions. I need to know if the shape has been moved. The only way to do that is to set the original left position. So we're going to take that original left position of the shape they've selected, and I'm going to put it inside B11. I'm going to take that top position of that selected shape, and I'm going to put it in B12. I'm going to set B13 to false. That's going to be our check for move. We're going to have a loop that runs as long as it's false. Once it goes to true, that loop is going to stop. So then what we want to do is I want to select the actual shape. That shape name is called task item group and then whatever the task ID is. And that's going to help the user. So that means once they select it, that entire group, and that way they have the freedom to move it elsewhere. So next up, what I want to do is I want to run a macro called GTD check for move. And that's the next macro. So this is the macro that's running right now. We want to know the destination row, the destination column, the task row, the task column, count delay. I'll go over some of these variables as we move through the macro. First thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that B10 is not empty. If we don't have an accurate database row for the selected task, we can exit out, right? We can't make a change unless we actually have a row. So I'm going to set the task ID, which is going to be in B9, and I want to run a delay, right? We want to run a loop and create a delay to give the user the time to make the change if they're making any changes. So we're going to run a delay from 1 to 100,000, creating a loop. And we're going to do events. This allows the user to continue to work in Excel while the loop runs. As soon as B13 goes to true, we are going to exit out of that loop. So if B13 equals true, then we're going to end. That ends everything and exits out of the loop. We need to be able to exit out. So as soon as we detect a shape move, we're going to set B13 to true. So now we're going to focus on the shape that's selected. We know the shape because it's always going to have task item group and the task ID. Next up, what we want to do is I want to check to see if the shape has been moved from its original position. We know the original left position is based in B11. We know the original top position is in B12. So we can check if the left position of the current shape does not equal B11 or the top position does not equal B12, then we know it's been moved. However, we need to check for an accurate move. If they decide to move it somewhere that's inaccurate, like all the way up here, we need to let them know to please make sure to move it to a correct area. And we're going to refresh it. So we're going to check for a correct move. First of all, we're going to set the move to true. That's important. B13 becomes true. The task row is going to be what's in B10. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check for the incorrect move. If the left position is less than H1, that means the left position is beyond this place, I'm going to let them know that's not a correct, right? There's nothing here, so we want to let them know they can't move it there. I also want to check if the left position is greater than T1, that means if they move it all the way over beyond here, way, way beyond here, because there could be possible groups here, if it's moved beyond here, I want to let them know that it's too far to the right. So we're going to let them know. Or if the top is greater than 35, right? We don't want them to move it beyond, let's say, 35. I want them to be able to move it all the way down to a possible, let's say, 35. If it's beyond 35, then they moved it too far down below. So that means if the top position is greater than 35 or the top position is less than row 3, then we're going to let them know to please make sure to move the task to a correct area. So that's important. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to end drag and drop. What that's going to do is going to go all the way down here to end drag and drop. We're going to reload the tasks and we're going to set, this should be B13 here, B13 to true. Very good. So now we set the task move to true. Saving our work so far. So that's what we're going to do. So we're just checking for that correct move. We've determined that they've moved it to somewhere probably correct. We need to determine what type of change, right? It's important. If they've moved it inside this area, it's probably going to be a subcategory change. Meaning if they've moved it from here to here, we know they're probably changing the subcategories. However, if they've moved it inside this area here, we need to make sure that it's going to be a task type change. So we need to determine what type of change. So to do that, 
on a subcategory change. And that's going to be if the left position is greater than J1. Here's J. So the left position has got to be to the right of that. Or it's to the left of T1, which is all the way over here because we have up until, you know, 10 said categories. So we know it's probably going to be left of T1. Then it's going to be a subcategory change. So then we're going to do sub category. So we know it's a subcategory change, but we may not, right? If they decide to move it to somewhere where there's no subcategory, which is here, I need to check because row two and whatever column is nothing. So I need to check on that. So let's do that. If subcategory name is going to be whatever's in row two and whatever the top left column is. The value is our subcategory name, meaning if I move this shape, row two and whatever column, that's going to be the name. But if it's blank, we got to check for that. If the subcategory name equals empty, then please move to an existing subcategory. Then we're going to exit out, going to the end, drag and drop, which moves it down to the bottom. However, if it's correct, all we need to do is very simple. We just need to update it. We've already captured the subcategory. We've already know the database row. We know the column because it's going to be the subcategory. All we need to do is update column F with the correct subcategory and then just refresh the list. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to update F equals that new subcategory name. And then we just go to drag and drop. And what that does is it refresh everything. We've changed the database. So all we need to do is refresh. Very easy. What if it's a task type change? How do we know if it's a task? Well, it would be within this range. If they're dragging it inside this range, that means that they're changing the task type. So how do we know that? Well, again, if it's going to be greater than H1 and it's less than I1, so it's between in this column, and we also need to check it's between rows 14 and 23, and the less than 24, so let's add one more. I'm going to add the top position should be greater than, let's say, 13. I'm going to set that up. And dot top, let's move that over a little bit so you can see, is greater then we can just add this here and then paste that here. And we want it greater than what? We want it greater than H13. So that's important. Or we could probably put H14 minus a few points. That should be fine. We'll do H14. H14 should be sufficient. It needs to be greater than H14. Then we know it is a task type change. So we're going to set the task type to whatever's in column H and the top left row cell. If for some reason the task type equals zero, then let them know. Why would it be zero? The value of this is actually zero because it's a link. And that means if they decide to move it inside anywhere here, we need to let them know to please move to an existing task type. So we're going to do that right here that we're checking H and the top left cell. This is the task name here. If it's correct, then all we need to do is update column C of our database. So inside our database, we have task type here. All we would need to do is update that and then refresh the list. Perfect, that's task type change. Lastly, it is going to be our task status. So this is gonna be task status, I'll update that. Task status change. In this case, how do we know that it's gonna be greater than H1, less than I1, and it's going to be less than H35. So it's gonna be less than this. And I guess we should also put greater than 25. So let's add that. So we're going to update that. Now we've got it right here. We just need to add it here. And then we just need to change the text there. So copy this. And then we're going to paste it right down here. I want to put that into 25. It has to be greater than row 25. Perfect. Okay, in that case, then we know it is a status change. So we're going to get the task status from column H in the top left cell row. So this is our status name. Then we want to check. Again, I'm going to make one more check. If they've dragged it inside the correct area, but there's nothing there, we need to let them know to please move to an existing status. So we're going to check if the status equals zero, we're going to let them know. Otherwise, we're simply going to update column D of the database, which is our status. That's it. We're going to update that with the task status, and we're going to go all the way down here. Then lastly, we're going to set true to move. That's going to exit the loop. Once we've made that change, we're simply going to run this loop and keep running it until they've made a change or until the timer runs out. We're going to reset the tasks and reset B13 to true. That's it. Saving our work so far. Very cool. That is it for this training. We are a little bit over time, but I'm happy to bring these to you. In this training, we showed you how we can create a very cool getting things done application in which we use drag and drop, filtering, and a whole lot of other features to create a really magical application. I hope you have liked these trainings. Don't forget to comment below, subscribe, click the notification icon bell, and hopefully we'll see you on Patreon so I can add many more features to 
this incredible application and i'll have that ready for you along with a brand new training video so we'll see you on patreon for that thanks so much and we'll see you next week